Morning folks, Nick here. It's uh, day 39, I believe. Oh, that's the hotel I stayed in. It's sort of like prefab. Very odd. Um, I expect it on a building site or something, you know, one of those permanent ones. Just leaving Metz and it's a glorious day. It was forecast for rain. It rained a lot yesterday, but uh, no, no rain yet, anyway. So yesterday we did 250 kilometers, which is just about uh, 150 miles to get to, to Metz. The hotel last night was okay, it, you know, it was fine. Didn't seem to be the nicest of areas, but um, you know, it, was, it was fine, nothing, uh, nothing happened. I did put the cover on the bike just in case. Uh, just made me feel more comfortable. And today we continue the journey towards Dunkirk. So as you've probably gathered, most of my journey has been a bit aimless. It's just uh, picking a point and heading towards it and see what turns up along the way. And that was really the purpose of this trip, just to try and get it out of my system. I knew I wanted to do a, a big trip, didn't particularly know where, came up with a very roundabout rough route, taking me through I think 21 countries, and um, just followed the sat-nav. The downside of that, of course, is it didn't really give me any, any time. I, I did have a few uh, days off the bike, but it didn't really give me any time to do those um, ad hoc, oh, this looks a nice place, let's have a look around here for a couple of hours. So I think I'm going to have to fix that for the next trip, which is the, the northern leg and actually plan my route out, a lot like Lajos had done. Unfortunately I lost all his uh, points of interest and I still had the, the time constraints so I couldn't really stop and, uh, and wander around. Plus it's a bit tricky with all the bike gear because you get so hot. Anyway, um, so today, as I say, heading towards Dunkirk. It's about 460 kilometres I'll see where it takes us and uh, probably finish riding around 6 this evening or 5.30, 6 o'clock and then make a decision as to whether I just uh, stretch tomorrow and get the Euro Tunnel and, uh, and home or whether I spend another night in France and then uh, get a earlier Euro tunnel on Saturday. I'll make that decision later, depending on how uh, how today's journey goes. I must add, the route so far, which isn't very far, it's been lovely. This road, really nice surface, got some curvy bits in it. Very pleasant indeed. Well, that was a nice little breakfast, a couple of croissants and a coffee. It's only a machine, sort of vending type machine coffee, but it was nice nonetheless. For three euros twenty. On that little boulanger there.
he was going to go then. I think he thought he was going to go then too. So lots of towns now all strung together with uh, just little patches of something in between, okay. So it's one sort of big urban, not sprawl, but almost. They're getting pretty though, they do keep them nice. A little fountain in the middle there. This is the D643 for those interested. I'm not sure if you'd head up down this way, but if you did, it's quite a nice road. Looks like a big railway siding or whatever the terminology might be, not siding. A lot of railway tracks, probably a, a major junction point. Longuion. established town just coming into the town of Avios uh, look at that basilica that really is uh, something I'm just going to take a photo of that. That is quite some impressive building. Wow, look at it. It's going to do a U-turn up here and uh, go and take a better look. That is a very beautiful piece of architecture. We're on the D110, just entered Little Town, and it's saying that Belgium is 0.2 of a kilometre away. So we've just left Ferrari, and here we are. Belgique. I imagine there's going to be any customs control here. Okay. So we're in Belgium then, again. We started off, our very first country was France and then we went into Belgium. But we've been in France, entering Belgium again, and then we'll go back into France again at some point. My next uh, challenge is to find somewhere to eat lunch. The pretty pond here. Just taking a very slight diversion. I actually need to go the other way, but look at those stables. Just take a very slight detour. It's lovely here. Maybe this is where I'll find somewhere to stop and eat. Well, that looks very busy, doesn't it? It's quite some uh, impressive building as well. 
turn at the bottom. But it's very pretty. So another closed road. Let's see whether we can find somewhere way round. This chap's coming through anyway. But, um, looks as if this little road on the left goes round. Surely that's closed. <laughs> Look at this one. Are they diverting traffic down here? And the other one looks fine. What's the point of that then? for lunch at uh, this little place just drive past to show you a little place there QG Cafe oh, very nice it was too I had a croque monsieur which is sort of ham and cheese toasty sandwich a bottle of water a coke and a coffee and uh, it's just only me around in circles. And that was 11, 11 euros in Belgium, so I didn't think that was too bad. And I've sort of made a decision now, I think. I'm going to see if I can continue for another couple of hundred kilometres. Then that leaves me 150 odd to get to Dunkirk. Kirk, it's only 40 to Calais which is where I'll pick up the Euro Tunnel and I'll probably do that tomorrow and uh, make tomorrow my last day get home tomorrow evening that's the current plan it depends on um, how this goes so that'll be almost six weeks just been travelling along the N40, the N40, still in Belgium, 300k kilometres, 180 miles from Dunkirk. And this road has been fabulous. Uh, so many twisties in it, I should have pressed the, uh, the record button. It's been absolutely lovely. Just, um, you know, sweeping bends so you can they're left-handers and right-handers. You can sort of get a bit of a rhythm going. But of course, they've run out now. They've, uh, because I've pressed the record button, I've run out of uh, road to demonstrate. This is the town of Dinant. Dinant. D-I-N-A-N-T. Look at that. Cut the way through. <laughs> Amazing. This does seem a, an interesting town. You can't really see much of it because we're in this little bit between these houses. It does look nice nestled along the, uh, the river there.
This would be an interesting town to visit. Fortress up the top. Look at that, gothic style. Uh, we want to sort of go over the river, so... Well, what a pretty town, I must say. Dinant. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing that right. D-I-N-A-N-T. You know, if you're looking for a city break or something, a bit unusual city break, then some of these places, you could do worse. But somewhere like this, I think this is on the cards for me just for a, a weekend break. I, <laughs> I owe my wife an awful lot of weekend breaks. Uh, and a summer holiday for that matter. But, um, that's a different story. But look at this view. You know, again, I keep on going on about wow look at this view and then I get to the next place and go wow look at this view but really they are all fabulous in their own way I just look at the reflections I doubt if you'll be able to see them of the trees and the properties in the water all the forests up behind so just stop for a few minutes at a uh, petrol station not exactly sure where um, but a cold coffee and a can of chocolat. Got about uh, 80 kilometers to go to leave 150 for tomorrow to Dunkirk. So um, give you an update as we progress but uh, not sure where I'm staying yet. But this is, uh, it said it was a cafe and so I thought there'd be some seats but there's not really. Never mind. Anyway, see you in a minute. Another um, major historical site by the look of things exactly where I am on the N275 looks like a uh, you know, destroyed abbey I was saying earlier, I don't know whether you, I left it in about Tintern Abbey, it's a bit like that Tintern near Bristol it's just a shell now but it's um, you know the walls are still there shame I don't know what the town that town is. Um, I've booked a hotel in a place called Halle, H-A-L-L-E, uh, which was on the route that I was on. Or well, it's just been a minor detour. And so I'll be here the night. And it's uh, seven o'clock or thereabouts. So I just needed um, some accommodation. I think it's a bit late to go camping now. May as well have a bit of comfort on my last last day or last night. Assuming that this hotel does provide comfort. <laughs> last night's was just unusual. It, it did have comfort, but um, it was just unusual. So Hotel Alsput should be just around this corner possibly this um, building here yep looks like it it's meant to have a restaurant as well it says it has parking Wi-Fi and all the rest so tell us put this is home for the night. Um, I think we did about 300 kilometers today, 180 miles. Uh, quite a nice room. Fully functional bathroom, as you would expect. And uh, yeah, quite nicely laid out. There is a restaurant downstairs. 
bikes parked there at the moment, but I'm parking that on the terrace. We're about uh, 160 kilometers still from uh, Dunkirk, 100 miles, and 40 kilometers from Dunkirk to Calais, 25 miles. So 125 miles from Calais, um, which should be sort of easily achievable in the morning. I'll have breakfast here, set off. I haven't decided what time the train is that I'm going to get, but um, whatever it is, I'll let you know. Uh, sad thing is, this is my last last evening away, um, last night away for this trip anyway. Uh, I've had uh, some great fun, but I'll speak to you about it tomorrow in any event. And uh, I'm going to go and park the bike round the, uh, the corner and have a shower, have something to eat and uh, prepare for tomorrow. Right, anyway, I'll leave you to it. Bye for now.